Hey, what's going on you guys? In this video, I wanted to talk about something a little bit different, but it's a video I've been wanting to make for a long time because I produce a lot of music for artists. I produce a lot of music for music libraries. I sign a lot of music to publishers, but I also teach a lot of private students in, you know, I used to be guitar lessons, but now it's actually music production and audio engineering. And something that I hear a lot from private students, um, too many times that I like to admit, is they'll say something like, yeah, I've got this song, I've got this project, I may have been working on it for six months, I'm gonna get around to mixing it, I'm gonna finish it, but first I need to buy this plugin, I need some money, I gotta buy this plugin, or I gotta buy this synth, or I gotta find a way to illegally download this plugin. And uh, I've actually seen students tank their computer setup uh, because they needed to download 17 cracked versions of third-party plugins that they thought they needed because they saw on Reddit that these are the best plugins for this, this, and that. Guys, you don't need this stuff. You don't need this. If you have a DAW, I use Ableton. It doesn't have to be Ableton. It could be any DAW. You have everything you need stock. In 2024, if you have your DAW, you have the plugins already. You don't need to buy anything third-party. Whatever you decide to do with your money is your business, but it should never prevent you from achieving your goals, achieving your dreams of making the music you want to make and making the best possible mixes. It's not necessary. I'm going to show an example right now. You might find this interesting. And I'm going to I'm going to do it with my own stuff because I'm an older guy. I've made money. I've bought things. I, I love all the things I bought. This is a great plugin. This is a third party plugin. It's based off of a very famous hardware unit that many professional mastering engineers use on their mastering chains. This blue guy, it's impossible to make this thing sound bad. It's a fantastic EQ. I love it. I use it as like a big lift. It just lifts the frequencies. This air gain knob over here in particular does that. I'm going to put this on the master bus. You're going to see what it does. And then we're going to see what this thing does as well. So here's the music. Now what I'm going to do is turn up the air gain all the way and let's A, B it and see what happens. So here it is with it off. And now look over there, I'm going to turn it on. Ready? There's obviously an increase in level, but there's also a lift that's happening with all the high frequencies and even some of the mid frequencies as well. That's really pleasing. It works really, really well. It's very musical. Sounds great, right? Let's listen to it one more time off and then on. Wow, it's like the whole mix just opened right up, right? It's like you took a, there was a comforter that was laying on top of the mix and you just ripped it off and now you can hear everything wide open. It's a really, really great effect. I love this plugin. However, here I have EQ8 that's offered stock through Ableton Live Suite and I've got an EQ curve there and I basically matched it. I just matched what it was doing. So let's listen to it and turn this one on. Similar effect, right? Now let me see if we can spot the difference. First we'll do the mag, then we'll do the EQ8. Now the other. Let's be honest. Can you really hear the difference? Both of them lifted the signal. Both of them added color to the mix and they open things wide up and, you know, maybe a little too much, by the way, but they both had the same effect. I just matched it with the EQ line and EQ8. It's a very negligible difference, you guys. Okay, this came stock with Ableton. So that's my point is that however you want to spend your money is up to you. Look, we're, we're, you go on YouTube, there's videos posted every single day from influencers asking you to buy the latest and the greatest thing, software and hardware. There's nothing wrong with it. If you want to spend money, spend money. It's your money. Spend it how you want to spend it. Um, but it should never prevent you from getting good mixes. It should never prevent you from being inspired. You can make the, the uh, synthesis sounds with the stock synthesizers. You don't need to buy a $2,700 hardware synthesizer to be inspired. If you have the money, in, you know, in my opinion, okay, you're not putting yourself in debt and you want to have some fun with your money, that's your business. But you don't need that stuff to finish your mixes. 
to be inspired, to find better sounds, to be a better music producer. You don't need that stuff. So hopefully this video um, gave you guys some inspiration and some insight. And um, it's great to look at stuff and window shop on the internet, but you don't need this stuff, you guys. You really don't. I hope you found this video inspiring. Hit the like button and subscribe. And I'm going to post links down below to how you can get the most out of Ableton Live if you have this DAW. So I've got some synthesizer tutorials and some other stuff, some other videos. I'll just link it to this video if you're new to the channel. And uh, yeah, I'll leave it there. As always, you guys have fun making music.